time, my friend, it's Pat Sloan, and it is pumpkin time. It is time to make pumpkins, and I am so excited, so excited. Okay, all right. We had to have a plan where the month of September we're making a pumpkin quilt, and there's uh, options, options. <clears throat> so first, I originally bought the Jolly Bar <clears throat> this whoops whoops there we go this one which came with a free pattern and that's exclusive to the jolly bar so only those of you who bought the jolly bar have this pattern uh which um there's a lot of you and so i thought oh there's tons of these well you bought them all so then more people wanted to still make pumpkins along with me so i suggested that you pick up this pattern so this one has a similar pumpkin and uh, it's really darling and many, many of you love, love this pattern. It also has, my printer was out of ink when I printed this, but it also has a mini version, which is so darn cute. Now there are other pumpkin patterns out there. So if you happen to have one that you've always been wanting to make this month <laughs> on Tuesdays, sew pumpkins from it. So that is, that is kind of how this is going to flow. I'm going to, I'm going to lay out and talk about a plan for working on the pumpkins because there's kind of two ways to approach it, but I want to show you the first row. So the one I am doing has three rows of pumpkins. So I'm going to do the three rows and I will be doing mini pumpkins along with us you know along with the, this month on tuesdays i'll be also be doing mini pumpkins and so i'm going to talk about fabric for that because they're just so cute i have to make them now this uh pattern by cluck cluck so has more pumpkins and more rows but you can reduce that you can just do four rows and four across four by four so if you just put like here and cover up the bottom so you can see it'd be four by four so that you could do less, less pumpkins if you wanted. Uh, you still have to do a, another row. And then of course, other pumpkin patterns all are going to be, you know, set up a little bit different. One of the ones a lot of you like is this one, this hocus pocus pattern. Now it is only, uh, you have to get a print copy. So you'll have to order it. Maybe you already have it. You just haven't made it yet. So if you have this one and you want to sew it along with, with me, um, that's great too. So any pumpkin pattern is legit, you know? <laughs> so that means we're going to see different uh, pumpkins being made during, during the month of uh, September, which is so fun, so fun. Let's go to the other side and just talk about the mechanics of how to split this up to work on it for the month. There are basically two ways I think you could handle this. One is how the patterns are written. The patterns are written to do all of one size pumpkin and then do all the next size punk pumpkin. So like for um, the one that I'm doing, you do all the little pumpkins and I have the, um, the background, you know, the, the upper part sewn onto it as well. Otherwise you would just, of course, if you didn't want to do that yet, you could just do the single pumpkins. But the patterns in both of these, the cluck cluck sew one of pumpkins and the Jolly Bar one, it's all make this size pumpkin, how many you make. Next size pumpkin, how many you make. So like here are, are these guys with the vertical and you can see you're gonna have the same thing in this pattern. You're gonna have vertical pumpkins. Um, and then there's the patchwork pumpkin on the Jolly Bar one. And this one has a checkerboard pumpkins. So you can see the checkerboard pumpkins. And then horizontal pumpkins, horizontal lines. And this one has horizontal lines. So they have very similar pumpkin feels uh, to them. Uh, this particular pattern has leaves on it. Same with the mini. The mini has, I know you can't see that. Oh, <laughs> I'll pop a picture up. There, that's better. <laughs> so the mini has leaves. So that's the uh, kind of a difference between these pumpkins and uh, the Jolly Bar pumpkins is that this one has a leaf on each of the pumpkins. So, so making all of one kind and then moving on to the next style is one method. The other method would be to work a row. So in my case, I like to work rows, <laughs> but I'm gonna talk about both each week. So I will, you know, there are one, two, three, four, 
what's that? One, two, three, four. There's four style pumpkins in this one, and there are six in this one. There's six different style pumpkins um, because some have the same pattern, like the checkerboard, but there's a tall one and a, and a shorter one. Um, but I like to do the rows. And so this will be three weeks of rows for me and I'll be showing you each row. Uh, if you're making this one and just say you make it a little bit smaller, like a, f a four, four cross, four down, then on the fourth week you'll be finishing up yours. And I will be doing the minis the whole time. So uh, I'll be making, and there's how many rows on the mini? There's four, there's four rows on the mini. So I will be doing those. And I'm gonna make a mini here today. I'm gonna to make one and show it to you because they're so cute. I can't wait to make one. I can't wait. So now that you have that decision, that's what you're gonna do. You're going to decide, do I make, um, you know, horizontal, you know, like, so I have to make one of each or do I make all of the one size? And then you have to split that up for your, for your week. So if you have, to make like so this week you would make all of the little mini pumpkins and on here let me just show you let me just show you this pattern because if you're just joining in you can't get the other one so I will just show you here instead okay so I can't show you the directions of course but I just want to show you how it's laid out a bit I've got some sticky notes on here so here are the six different styles so if you have four weeks maybe you're doing two, four, you know, two at a time, two at a time, two at a time. That's three weeks, and then you leave the fourth row for setting. That would be how I would do it for a month. You know, just do these two, these two, and these two, and do all of them. And it tells you how many. You're just doing one of those and two of those. So maybe you want to even bank, bank it up this week and do all three of these if you're doing it that way. Otherwise, you could just sew the row. You would sew... Um, you know, there's one, two, three, four. If you're doing four, you just leave that off, then you would just sew these four blocks. And maybe you do another if you're doing, you know, do another couple for the row down. It's a lot of options, but that's good. It's fun because you can do it the way that works for you and how you like to think. Because some of us like to sew it all together and other ones really just like to do the same pattern, you know, to get all of them out at once. And then here are the directions. And this is kind of a booklet style pattern and uh, really nice directions, tells you exactly what to do. These are super easy and fun. So many of you have just gotten either one of these and zoomed along. Okay, let's talk about the minis. The mini! <laughs> because <laughs> I need, I want to, I want to decide on fabric. I'm going to make one, but I'm waffling. Uh, honestly, I'm waffling on fabric because I actually have a lot of Halloween things done like this right now. A lot of the lighter colors, lighter pumpkins, um, white, more white or late, very light base backgrounds. That's kind of, I've been doing that for a few years now. Um, and I really like it. I have dark walls in my home right now. Someday I'll paint them back to white, but they're chocolate brown. And so uh, these just sort of look really good in the space. I'm just really loving the vibe of these lighter Halloween things. So uh, the little mini one. I'm debating because I'm thinking I love white pumpkins. I'm thinking of doing white pumpkins on it instead of orange pumpkins. So let me show you what I pulled here from uh, the, the um, fruit cake. Remember the fruit cake uh, that I did the pattern with this? This These are parts of that from the fruit cake. Oh, that's a more golden. It's a different kind of orange. But anyways, I have a bunch of this left. And I thought, well, if I did an orange background, then I could do white pumpkins, put different white pumpkins. And this is um, 16. I need to do 16 different white pumpkins for the for the mini. You do I have a better image? There you go. So you can see them. See them a little better there. So it's uh, four by four. The whole mini quilt is oh there it is right at the top. 23 by 29. So it, it's a nice little size. I'll just tuck in somewhere cute. See it? So cute. Because I'm leaning this way, and I'm going to make one like this to test it. I'm going to take this orange and my fabric here and make a white pumpkin and just see what I think. And they've got leaves. Do they have leaves? 
yeah, so some of them have leaves on the on the mini. Uh, some of them have leaves. Uh, yeah, it's not. They don't all have leaves on the big one either. So you can see. So you can decide. If you <laughs> don't want any leaves, you could just leave the big, leave them off. Make the pumpkins without leaves. So let me make a little mini, and let's see. Let's see how it looks. Let's see how cute it looks. So for these mini pumpkins, a couple things. One, I'm going to just do one test one, but I went ahead and cut all. Got a little little design board out. I went ahead and cut all the stems that told me to stem to do, which is a stem for each pumpkin, and then about half of them have a uh, leaf. And I'm doing all the same green leaves in my Promise Me fabric. This is a brown I've had for a while, and then I just cut a strip of uh, the porch swing white to do a white pumpkin on this orange background, and then I will pull like some other fabrics. I will do another one like this. And I don't know, I might do a couple from the white, you know, a couple from each. There are 16 little minis to do over the course of the, um, of the month. So that is, and then, and then of course setting them. Ah, so cute. Okay. So now at this point I'd cut some of the green, but I didn't cut them all. And I thought I would just remind everybody that when the, how I cut is that I do not cut just a big strip when I know I do not need a whole big strip. I've already just used this portion and I need a little bit more and I already calculated that it's about um, uh, six and a half inches more. That's a little extra. So what I'll do is just cut out how much I need and that is it. That way I'm not creating this funky you know, strip here, which is would really be quite long. This long strip, I'm not cutting all see it's even longer you can't even see it all so I'm not even cutting I'm not cutting all that which would be what what would I do with it I don't I don't need it this is all I need and so now I can put this back in my stash where it has a section out but there would be other things that I could use this for and it's not wasted I find it very wasteful to cut a strip and then subcut when you're not actually going to use the whole strip um, I and I do not like to waste like that. I just, I think it's wasteful. Um, just not how my brain likes to process. So I've trimmed this to what I need. And then for the leaves, I have to just cut a few more here. And then I'll go on and make my pumpkin in my background and then sew a block and show it to you. So they're all cut to do one sample. I've got the white pumpkin, the orange background, so that these are gonna be done sew and flip. The stem and the leaf, and again, sew and flip for the leaf. Can't wait, see how cute it is. I have this ready to press. I'm gonna do the sew and flips, and of course, you know, do that little stem as well. But I think it's important with these guys to really get them flat, and the wool mat and the clapper are excellent for that. Let me show you on this side that doesn't, hasn't been done yet. So I will, I'm filming one handed here. So I will press them up. There we go. Press, press, press so that they're nice and warm. You've got the heat that's going through on the wool mat to the fabrics and then the wood is gonna sort of draw that up as well. And then I would let that cool. If you have the time, um, you know, if you have more than one clapper, more than one clapper, it really helps to um, go ahead and press them like that because then they're, they're really nice and flat for when you sew. So there it is, tiny little pumpkin. Oh, he's so cute, so, so cute. Okay, I had to, I had to rifle through my cream fabrics because yeah, I'm gonna do the orange background and white boo pumpkins. Uh, I might see if I can find one that's kind of a greeny white. You know, they have those green ones now too. Those are so cool. Uh, so I'm going to do that and I'll do that along as, as we go. So a few, other, a few other things. As I was coming back over here, I realized so many people want to know what is hanging up above that. What is that quilt? So let me just show you. <laughs> So a few times people have said, oh, show us what's on these upper walls. This is a vaulted ceiling in my family room. See, here is the desk, the camera equipment, the deck, uh, into my kitchen, into my living room. You've been there. The dining room is first in the living room. It's a small home. 
Uh, so with the vaulted ceiling, in order to create less echo in here, plus to make it pretty, a long time ago we just grabbed some quilts and hung them up. <laughs> so it wasn't too scientific at all. Uh, the tulip way up there is one of my patterns from long, long ago. This is a Barn Star um, painted block. It's a resin, not resin, it's on a lightweight board. The company's not in business anymore, but it's really cool. I love it. And then, let me see, I have got to get over here. Now, the small piece right up above, this was made by Susan Aki for our Splendid Sampler book. That was her block in the Splendid Sampler, number two, and she just did it in repeat. This one was a uh, sew along. It's a sampler, and it's like crazy fabric. I had a, and I used it all, like all the crazy fabric. I didn't add anything to calming at all, and that no calming except for that little inner border. <laughs> there's just stacks of there's some selvages, some other supplies, and then way up at the top are just two table runners because. Now I could come way over here. I should have showed you those first since I was started over here. Uh, there's my design wall. You can see I, I just, I can reach up to here with the ladder. And uh, that's a ladybug from one of my earlier books. And then the shamrock basket is from my tour of Ireland book. And so that is what's up high that you rarely see. There you go. Now you know the mystery. They're just things that were put up there when I first moved into this studio many years ago now, when I first moved into this family room of the house, and they've just stayed there because they're good sound barriers. Uh, and then I did switch out the one from Susan that Susan Aki gave me because uh, there was something else bigger there, and we had to do some work on that portion of the wall. So when uh, we, I put something newer up there after it, uh, after that wall work was done uh, last year, I think. So I have a couple things in the mail. This came from Peg in Iowa, and she said she was sewing with uh, Robin Pickens fabric, which is called what Forest Frolic. It's so cute, so so cute. You all are loving that fabric. So once she was sewing with that, she made me a mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Peggers, this is so darling. You are just spoiling me, girl. You're spoiling me. So she made this so that I could make it into a pillow. A nice little pillow. This is going to be so cute. And then she sent along another piece of the fabric. Is this Robin is a beautiful artist. She does um, artwork for all kinds of things. And you, we all love her for the fabric. Uh, and I noticed she has some cross stitch now too. So I actually stuck one of those in my shopping cart and it is on its way here so I can show you that um, thank you thank you thank you Peg and then uh, Elaine in Pennsylvania sent me some goodies Elaine lives in the town where I went to college and so when we f um, first started chatting on my morning chat she she mentioned where she was and I was like ah that's where I went to college and so we have chatted ever since and you have just been so sweet sending me things Elaine look at the pretty card look at that all right so what do we have oh <laughs> frogs super cute frogs I love them <gasps> They look yummy. And then so I have a little collection. I see a quilt block. Look, look at this, the mermaids. <gasps> that might go with that sailboat fabric, sailboat fabric that came the other day. And what is in here? Oh, so cute. Let me just first show you the little blocks. So she made a couple of little blocks. <gasps> look, oops, let me get in business. Look how darling these are. <gasps> these little animals, these little critters. Oh my goodness, a hummingbird is so sweet. And the little Scotty dog. Oh my goodness. They are so darling with a little eyeball. <gasps> oh, Elaine. And then she sent oh, some railroad fabric, which uh, I need to do Greg a railroad quilt, don't I? Something with the railroad fabrics on it. That is super nice. Super nice. And some pretty pens. Oh, I love pens. And what's in here? There's two more things here. <gasps> this is cute. It looks like a wee little gnome charm. Ah, look, <laughs> his little knit, his little knit outfit and a little knit hat. So sweet. And I spy, a, oh, look at this basket with the cherries and red stripes inside. 
Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. This is so cool. It was all kind of folded up nice, too. Look at that. Folds. Travel. So you take it with travel. Okay, my friends. We're making pumpkins. Whether you're making from the Jolly Bar because you bought that, whether you are going to um, do this pumpkin, whether you are going to do the mini version like I just showed you with the little pumpkin or another pumpkin pattern. Today kicks off pumpkins and I will do some um, cool parades of your pumpkins. So be sure you are sharing them. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.